We open this episode with an update on a high-tech personality who you just might remember. Steve Roberts is the best known of a group of people called tech nomads, folks who travel without leaving their techno gadgets behind. Roberts is famous for his behemoth, a bicycle bristling with electronic gear. Now, Behemoth has been in the garage for a few years now, but Robert still has that wanderlust, and Stan Bunger's been looking into what he's doing now. Boats, Boats. crammed with even more electronics than the bicycle ever dreamed of having. Why? I'm not sure I can entirely answer that. I think a lot of it has to do with wanderlust, and a lot to do with sort of the, the deep, true spirit of hacking, which is making something work when all the rules say it shouldn't be able to work. And so, does this work? We don't know yet. He's still building the thing, and I think for Steve Roberts, that's actually a large part of the fun, the fact that he's still building, and it may be for several months yet to go. Let's take a look at where he is, though. Lots of people take long bicycle journeys. Very few do it the way Steve Roberts did. He became famous after he crammed a bike and trailer full of electronics, called it Behemoth, and hit the road. Steve Roberts put in more than 17,000 miles on this thing, and while Behemoth is still around, today it's pretty much just a prop for his speaking engagements. Like the true nomad he is, Roberts has moved on, and here's his latest fascination. Someday it'll all be full of electronics, a boat called the Microship. Friends and volunteers are helping Roberts convert a couple of 19-foot canoes into trimarans. Roberts will fill them with computers and communications gear. He figures his next adventure will take him along the Missouri and Mississippi River systems. I'll be sitting here holding on for dear life. <laughs> The microship idea came to Robert several years ago while he pedaled along the shores of Lake Michigan. He realized even a cyclist never really gets away from it all. But the problem is, is that you're sharing the same space with cars and trucks and, and people of uncertain motives and, and, you know, just a lot of noise. You can't relax and drift on a bicycle. So Robert gets ready to go down to the sea in his ship. There are no fancy plans guiding this work. In fact, there aren't any plans at all. Give me a sense of how this works. Yeah, well, this is part of our CAD system. CAD is a cardboard-aided design. You make a part, and you look at it and go, hmm, you know, that needs to be over a little bit. You just cut it and move it. You know, it's, it's uh, editing in reality rather than on paper. Roberts can visualize every square inch of that reality. This is the, uh, the cockpit space. So it'll be almost like a little kayak-like combing here with a seat, which is a recumbent seat for operating the pedals. He did say pedals. The microship will have three systems of propulsion. Pedal power will drive this little propeller. The prop is a model airplane propeller. <laughs> Uh, 13 inches, so at $12.95 at the local hobby shop. There's room for a sail, and big solar panels will run an electric motor. They'll also supply juice for all sorts of electronic gadgetry. For the tech nomad, wandering while wired is the whole point. I am the microship control system. This is all collectively referred to Grand Central Station. So this little panel right here lets me have 32 audio inputs and 32 audio outputs with any of eight simultaneous connections among them. There's video, too. The microship will have cameras above and below water, all controlled from Steve's digital cockpit. There's 32K of RAM in there, and it's doing everything I need to do. You know, my application's in there with a the battery backup. It, it, uh, it runs all this stuff that I've been showing you that, it, that uh, makes the boat work. And, and make sure I heard you right. You said 32K, not 32 megs of RAM. 32K, not 32 meg. Exactly. The boat is quiet three miles away at 127 degrees. Microship has already taken Roberts on a long journey. The project has outlasted a couple of relationships. Now there's Lisa, who introduced herself to Roberts by email and will pilot a second boat, swapping data with his craft. They can't wait to get going. For, for two years, we've been in a, in a windowless building with, with fluorescent lights and absolute constancy except thermal. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's absolutely maddening. You know, it drives you insane. So the push is on to get moving again, out into that odd place where nature and technology come together. Steve Roberts has had plenty of time to think about this, and he realizes it's something he has to do. And I get restless if I'm stuck in the same place all the time, doing the same thing all the time. So, I mean, I'd, I wouldn't be a very good employee, for example, because the slope of my learning curve would start to asymptote, and then I'd be restless, you know, even if it was a wonderful company. Roberts has no idea how far Microship will carry him or how long it'll take to get there. After all, they're still building it. 
Well, you got to wonder, how does Roberts pay for all this? He begs, borrows, and steals is the simple answer. He goes to a lot of companies, high-tech and otherwise, and, and gets donations. Lots of times for the company, it's a chance to see their products working in a way they never intended to see them work. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But are you serious that he really has no plans for the boat? Absolutely serious. There's not a blueprint in this whole shop. You can look anywhere for one and not find it. He even had a big boat originally, his, his first plan for this thing, which he decided wasn't it, sold it off and started on the two smaller ones that he's working on now. For him, it's part of the process. Yeah, he loves to build. Keep All an right. eye on this guy.